So this, believe it or not, is just a small sample of the dongles I've tried to get my M1 Mac Mini to work with my 30-inch Apple Cinema display, as well as my 27-inch Thunderbolt display simultaneously and both at full resolution. Even with the 11.2 Big Sur update, uh, it still wasn't working. So what someone irrational as myself do? Get a whole new M1 Mac Mini to be able to compare both side by side at full resolution. All right, let's open it up and check it out. So as you may have already seen on my channel, I already unboxed one of these guys. So this is going to be kind of quick. That was more of a ASMR type thing. But um, one thing to note about this one, it came thrashed in the mail. So uh, yeah, hopefully it's working fine. But the boxes beat up in the corners and everything, as you could see. Um, it actually came just in an envelope. It wasn't even in a box, but oh well, hopefully this uh, Apple packaging protected it. All right, let's open it up. Bam, there it is. Now it looks like this inner box is mostly in fine shape, so it should be okay. Get this guy out of here. And in here, again, there's just some paperwork, nothing special. Uh, you do get the sticker though. There you go, bam. Nice silver sticker. Apple stickers are always a classic. And the power cord and nothing else. Um, this is actually, a, it's obviously just power cord, but it's a nice one. It's uh really flexible. The uh, prongs are uh, kind of a unique shape, uh, Apple-esque as you could say, and uh, really feels high quality. So I would definitely recommend using the uh, factory power cord. Now what we're all here for, let's listen to this. Bam. Slides right off. Bam. All right, let's get this fired up and see what these two monitors are like side by side. All right, and there you have it, two M1 Mac Minis stacked on top of each other. Hey, kind of had to go to an extreme length just to get these monitors to work. Um, to be honest, I didn't get the second Mac Mini just for this. Um, as you, a lot of you may know, um, there has been shipping delays on them and I actually ordered the one that ended up coming in later about two and a half months ago, but it just finally got here. All right, so uh, let's fire it up for the first time and see what it's all about. Opening chimes. And as you can see, it's up and running. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it up and we will be back. All right, here we go. I have them both playing the same clip, pretty much side by side just to do a little comparison between the two. First of all, they're both beautiful displays. The Apple Cinema display on the left, uh, again, is quite a bit older. It was originally made in 2004, believe it or not. But at that time, it was pushing $4,000 when uh, Steve Jobs unveiled it on stage. It was just kind of like a monster. There was really nothing like it at the time. And it still stood up all these years later. It's now 2021, it looks great. It's 30 inches again. And on the right is the Apple Thunderbolt display, which was discontinued in 2016 and then replaced with some of their LG stuff. And you know what? That thing looks great as well. The major difference between the two, obviously, 
the 27 inches versus 30 inches, but the Apple Cinema 30 inch display is a matte screen and the 27 is glossy. Now the glossy screen, just the way they work, the colors are always gonna be more vivid. It's got a lot more pop to it. Uh, the contrast seems better and everything, but if you're in a bright room, it's not always the the best choice. Um, you get lots of reflections. Luckily, I am facing the windows, so glare isn't a huge issue in my setup, but it can be in others. So it's really personal preference, whatever works best for you. As far as these monitors are concerned, man, it's really hard to pick a winner. You have the brighter colors on the 27 inch Thunderbolt, but you have kind of a more lifelike look on the 30 inch cinema display and it's three more inches larger. One other thing to note is the 27 inch Thunderbolt display also has speakers built in. It's got a EyeSight camera. It's even got a USB hub in the back with ethernet, uh, firewire, um, even Thunderbolt 2 port just right in the back. So it's an all-in-one. Then it's got the magnetic 2 charging that you can get a little adapter to turn that into USB-C or whatever. And rumor has it the new MacBooks coming out are bringing MagSafe back. So we'll see what that holds in the future. But as of now, man, these are some beautiful displays. I really feel fortunate. They are a little mix matched, obviously, but go ahead and enjoy that beautiful, beautiful monitor. Let's go ahead and uh, close these blinds back there to see what they're really like in their darker setting. We're back. I got the shutters closed and take a look at these in a kind of a more light control setting. You can tell the uh, Apple display on the right, the Thunderbolt display, really just has punchier colors, a lot more pop. But in certain situations, that's not always what you're looking for. Let's just go ahead and enjoy it. Again, this is not the most scientific of comparisons, but it's just kind of like a little real world demo. Wow. So with this comparison, I think I'm going to be keeping both but primarily using the 27 inch because again, it has the built-in speakers, it has the webcam and um, the USB hub in the back with ethernet and everything. So that's always a perk. But it is a really, really tough decision because they're both beautiful and having that matte finish on the Thunderbolt or the Apple Cinema display is a huge, huge perk that the Thunderbolt display just doesn't have. Look at the difference in black levels though. You can really see an advantage with the newer Thunderbolt display. So until Apple comes out with a little more affordably priced consumer level monitor, that's not the Pro XDR, I'm gonna stick with this setup for sure. Wow, look at those colors, beautiful. All right, that's enough rambling for now. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned for lots more videos just like this. Peace.